She's going to talk about the Euclid scientific archive system. Let's welcome Sarah. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, I am Sarah. Um, I am giving this talk on behalf of my colleagues from the ESAC Science Data Center and from the Euclid Science Operations Center. And I'm going to talk about the Euclid Science Archive System, but from a perspective of two years before the launch. So, first of all, um, let me start with the control. <laughs> let me start with the uh, mission goals. Um, the goal of the mission is to have a better understanding of what the dark energy and the dark uh, matter is, which is 95% of the universe, being only 5% the known universe, the visible universe. And to achieve this goal, Euclid is a survey, and Euclid is going to map one third of the sky with one optical camera and another camera and a spectrometer in the near infrared. The mission is going to take six years, and it's going to uh, be launched in June 2022. Uh, from the point of view of the management, ESA is responsible for the mission, and, but ESA that contains a huge contribution for the Euclid uh, consortium, which is huge, with more than 1,000 members. And um, the Euclid uh, consortium contributes uh, with the payload and also with most of the components of the ground table. Uh, from the point of view of the archive, um, how does the scientific archive fit into the overall of the science round segment architecture is that it's a central piece, as you can imagine. So the scientific archive, uh, the Euclid archive, is um, a combined system, it's a joint effort between the Groningen University and ESAC, and where, the, uh, where ESAC is responsible for the scientific archive and uh, Groningen University is responsible for the data processing, uh, for the metadata related to the data processing and for the system that enables the distribution of the data across the different data centers. There is a specific talk of Louis Williams tomorrow about all the details about the uh, data processing and the distribution systems. But let's go uh, to the science. Regarding the Euclid science, uh, Euclid sits on top of uh, three main pillars regarding the data science, which are images, spectra, and catalogs. But it's not only that. Euclid will also provide a set of uh, high-level uh, products that we call LD3, that are basically uh, uh, lensing data, um, shear maps, and um, other types of data, and we should adapt to this new science to provide the best tools available. And how do we achieve this? So we will achieve this <coughs> starting um, from the knowledge that we already share, that we have coming from the different missions. So let me uh, mention one of the uh, most representative regarding the different areas, where we have uh, the Gaia regarding the catalogs, we have uh, ESA Skype, regarding the management of images and the scientific discovery in that respect, and also other tools uh, like the visualization of spectra, um, uh, like for instance, the one already integrated in, in uh, XML Newton. So there has been already mentioned for other speakers already the challenge of uh, big data. And uh, this is what you could suppose for our data centers in terms of uh, data volume. So we will store for Euclid 10 petabytes of data. So um, this is going to stress our capabilities in terms of uh, storage and in terms of give access to this data. But going deeper into what that means, uh, we will have three different releases. The first one will happen two years after the launch. And it will contain uh, three different types of data, images, spectra, and catalogs, which is something important to say. And uh, the next one will happen between two and three years after uh, between one and the other. But uh, we will not only provide this kind of data, as I said, we will only provide, we will also provide uh, external data that is going to be a huge amount of data. And uh, this includes uh, surveys like the kilo degree survey, uh, like the dark energy survey, the LSSP data, pan stars, and so on. So it's a huge data. So the final release of the Euclid is uh, to, uh, 10 petabytes of data, uh, including all that uh, uh, information. So that's the uh, simplified, sorry, because I think I'm uh, recording time. So. Uh, that's the simplification, let's say, of the architecture of the, of the archive with the basic block. So we have an entry point, which is a web portal. And then we have a bio-compliant layer for a set of protocols to enable the interoperability and to give 
access to the different kinds of data that the Deep Dark Art will provide. Some uh, of these protocols are already important, some already have a very good invention, like the table access protocol to give access to a big catalog that will be of uh, 10 billion uh, objects, and uh, other discovery protocols for images, for spectra, and also uh, to discover different, service, different services to give access to specific images, for instance, or for spectra and other uh, backend operations like SODA, and uh, Biospace to access uh, Beta scale infrastructural data, and for sure the ingestion layer to feed the system. So, but let's go to the MIB. Um, this is a screenshot of uh, how the visualization of maps of Euclid looks like at the moment. So, the important of this uh, of this screenshot is that uh, what we have already, what we are seeing here, is simulated data coming from the consortium. So, we are already integrated within the Euclid consortium, and uh, we are not a legacy piece anymore. And we give access to the simulated data that the Euclid Consortium is providing together with uh, giving the uh, members of the consortium the possibility to test our interfaces early in advance. This is an example of uh, external, uh, in this case the test uh, survey, external uh, simulated data. This is a HIPS map that we have created and uh, give the possibility to the users to explore the map. For sure, if we go to the metadata field, um, we can already give uh, access to the EC members to uh, look for specific uh, observations and uh, for sure we have uh, specific uh, kind of searches and uh, we offer already the possibility to download this information but for sure this is not going to be enough uh, given that the data volume that is going to come. This is our standard interface for ADQN. So here we give all the freedoms to the users to make any type of query they want, not only for the catalogs but also for the uh, already relational model that we have, and uh, give access to a specific kind of operations uh, for each specific results coming from the data, which are these ones. Um, another important one that we recently added in our previous release of uh, uh, in June 2000, uh, in June this year, was. Um, the possibility to overlay the tab results on top of the specific uh, maps, and um, uh, the next for the next release, that we will provide uh, specific uh, access to metadata coming from these coming from these sources and to make it interactive. Another feature that we already provide coming from the simulated data is the possibility to look for um, to see the footprints and to see. Uh, other kind of reads that are generated within the simulated, uh, within the processing functions uh, that are used internally. This is a view of the latest uh, fields that uh, have been already uh, just uh, uh, delivered by the Euclid Consortium uh, regarding the, the test that they are already running. And to summarize and uh, to see what's next in the archive, uh, we, uh, as we for sure will produce, will produce uh, large amounts of data. Um, the next uh, services will be the catalog service, uh, which is absolutely unique for Euclid, so the users can specifically select uh, uh, specific regions of the images in order to play or make a start science with that specific piece. And uh, also a plotting service that is going to run close to the, uh, based on the specific results from TAP. So this will allow to make uh, specific statistics and plots uh, based on these results. But what is behind the scenes? Behind the scenes, this is a new hint of the architecture. Um, our solution of, for the database is based on Postgres, uh, which is Greenplan. We have been testing different um, databases already in the previous uh, test, like uh, Postgres Excel and Citrus Data, but we discovered some issues so we started to test green plan and uh, at the moment we have uh, very good results and um, uh, this uh, is the most uh, stable uh, cluster database that we have and currently we, uh, we have fit the system with uh, a catalog of 3 billion uh, sources and 100 columns and we have very very good results so the next test would be to run uh, the plus matches against the catalogs uh, on the other side we have the, the storage we are currently using NetApp, accessible by NFS, but we need to scale this solution, and for that we have been running a proof of concept on Ceph, and uh, we are already working on that. 
As uh, together with the group of concept on Apache Quark, and uh, that was already mentioned in previous agendas, and it's uh, regarding to identify how useful could be this uh, framework in uh, cases, for instance, like big uh, catalog proof matches, and also the analysis of images. Um, we have already, uh, we have run currently these, these tests. Um, but we cannot forget uh, something that is uh, extremely important for Euclid and is a possibility um, to move the code with the data. This is a, a, a paradigm that uh, we have uh, already been, um, uh, we have been really discussing about a lot. And um, it's uh, absolutely needed for Euclid. So currently Isaac um, uh, has already put a lot of effort on this platform, the Science of the Data Movement Integration platform. And uh, tomorrow is going to be a, a great talk on uh, this platform by Vicente Navarro. So he will give us all the details about the platform, but the idea is always the same, is to um, give the user the possibility to exploit all the Euclid data without having to download everything, without having to, to have locally a, a, an enormous infrastructure in terms of storage and processing capabilities. So I would like to thank all the organizers for giving me the opportunity to be here today and thank you for your attention. Questions? Did you say you, you are uh, satisfied and happy with the performance of Gloom Plum or? Yes. Yes. Have you tried others? I, I think there's another open source parallel Postgres out there. I forget the name of it. Uh, yes. Cybers. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We, we tested both. Ah. Exactly. So, uh, for instance, with uh, the problem with the, one of the problems with the cells that we have um, is that the reshuffling operation. So, in terms of you have to add new nodes, uh, the redistribution of the data across the node was not uh, good, let's say. So Gripland is a very stable solution, it's based on Postgres, so this is one of the things that we need in terms of uh, executing uh, ADQL um, language and uh, a specific uh, um, astronomical query language uh, operations on top of the database. That's why we, we decided for, for Greenplan open source, but uh, there is another commercial version for, for Greenplan too. Thanks a lot. Currently, the infrastructure we have for the green plan is not very big, as you say, it's 10 nodes in our testing infrastructure, but that's enough for, to manage uh, a catalog of 3 billion sources. That is a simulated one, but uh, it's a very big one. Yeah. So, this, regarding the moving code to the data, does ESA plan to have significant computational infrastructure in which users? can run their own like modified versions of the Euclid pipeline on the data, or are you just talking about storing the high-level data products and manipulating those? Uh, that's three questions in one. <laughs> um, first of all, yes, uh, you, um, ESAC is planning to have a specific platform to exploit um, the data, I mean, to, to give the users all the infrastructure to make it available. Uh, to process the data. But um, regarding um, if um, we are going to, we plan to uh, give access to the user to run specific pipeline versions on the data, that's not, uh, let's say, decided yet from the point of view of the, of the Euclid mission. And um, uh, from the point of view of uh, what are the data that is coming out from the data releases, let's say, um, I have explained uh, more or less which are the main uh, data that is going to be published, but it's still open from the point of view of the uh, scientific, of the science part of the consortium, which is currently selecting at a fine grain basis what are the, the products that are, going to be, that are going to be available. But for sure, the advanced products produced by what we call the A3, uh, which are the pure measurements and all that stuff, stuff that I mentioned, yes, they are going to be there. I prefer um, tomorrow, uh, Vicente Nauer is going to talk about a bit longer on that, so I don't want to make him any spoiler. <laughs> <laughs>
So he will he will tell us all the details about this uh, this platform infrastructure that I already show uh, a bit of the building blocks, but okay, he will explain it tomorrow. Okay, thanks. Thank you, our speaker again.